So, all right. Thank you, and, and thank you very much for coming today. Um, this really is about a joint operation that uh, South Australia Police have been involved with, and I'd like to introduce the Australian Federal Police Commander and State Manager for Adelaide, Commander Peter Sokora. Um, this was a very complex and comprehensive multi-agency operation which occurred this week in Adelaide, and that has led to the arrest of 12 men who we will allege are responsible for distribution and trade in illicit drugs, and those, some of those people are members of outlaw motorcycle gangs, specifically the Hells Angels, Gypsy Jokers, Descendants and Bandidos. Now, these men were arrested on Wednesday and Thursday in a series of coordinated efforts, with police also seizing methamphetamine, ecstasy, cocaine, cannabis and some weapons. The operation has involved personnel from South Australia Police, the Australian Federal Police as part of the National Anti-Gang Squad, the Australian Border Force and the Australian Taxation Office. And this was all a coordinated effort in disrupting and dismantling drug distribution at its highest level. This is something that uh, we will continue to put a significant focus on. There is no doubt that the scourge of methamphetamine and other illicit drugs is something that our society is struggling to cope with. But uh, this is our concerted effort uh, at a state level with our national partners to impact at the highest levels and with the greatest coordination that we can see. This operation really just highlights the importance of those joint operations and having all agencies working together towards that common cause. And I personally would like to thank our partners for their efforts in bringing about the arrest of these 12 men. And this is an ongoing operation and there is the possibility of further arrests occurring at some point in the future. So. Our message is quite simple to outlaw motorcycle gangs, is there is no tolerance for illicit drug distribution. I've spoken about the scourge that that is upon our society, and there are families out there who will talk personally about the impact that illicit drugs have on either members of their family and for those that are personally involved in drug use, the impact that that has on their life. So this is a concerted effort. It is a consistent and prolonged effort and these results are just an example of how that can occur when there is considerable cooperation. I'd like to now hand over to Commander Peter Socorro. Thank you. Good morning everybody. Um, first of all, I'd just like to uh, once again uh, echo the words of uh, Assistant Commissioner Duval uh, for the efforts of all the uh, officers and the agencies involved in this particular operation. Um, this is yet again another great example of interagency collaboration and cooperation. And on the back of the seizure that we had less than two weeks ago of 119 kilos of ice, uh, which was also linked to an outlaw motorcycle gang, this operation is, is very, very timely. And it also goes to show our resolve, uh, not only the, the Federal Police and South Australia Police, but all the partners that work with us, that we actually want to end organised crime and organised crime groups here in South Australia. Just a couple of things just about this operation. Um, firstly, sadly and unfortunately, um, you know, organised crime, organised crime gangs and outlaw motorcycle gangs um, are still chancing their hand at the criminal activity that they're undertaking here in this state. That's drug dealing, that's violence, that's dealing in arms, possessing arms, and then the hurt that comes with that and what it means to our society as well. Um, but an operation such as this um, definitely makes a dent into their business model and that definitely gives us the impetus to go the next step further. And what we've seen in the last few weeks and indeed the last few months, um, you know, we've ramped it up a notch now in how we're tackling this problem, not only here in South Australia, but also nationally. Secondly and finally, um, I'd just like to uh, say um, the resolve and determination of all the people that have worked on this, uh, not only in the last couple of days, but in the last few weeks and the last uh, few months as well, has been phenomenal. The cooperation and the collaboration that we see, not only between South Australia Police and the Federal Police, but the likes of Australian Border Force, the Australian Criminal Intelligence Commission, AUSTRAC um, and, and other agencies as well, the Australian Taxation Office, 
is absolutely paramount in tackling this problem. This is not just a problem about narcotics and solving it with police resources. We need the resources of all our partners uh, across the state and across the nation as well. So I uh, really commend all those agencies involved. Also importantly, the NAGS model here in South Australia, I think you can see, you know, in the last few months, the National Anti-Gang Squad is working and it's working very well. Um, and with the funding extended through to 2019, um, this will not be the last time that we will be standing here, unfortunately. But um, we will send a clear, very clear message out to outlaw motorcycle gangs and any criminal groups here in South Australia that if it's not going to be the National Anti-Gang Squad, it's going to be another arm of the police and our partners that will be targeting you in our endeavours to stop this criminal activity. Thank you. And we're happy to take questions. I think it's very tough. I mean, uh, this is not the end of it. Uh, this is very much about really disrupting their business model. Their business model has within it a feature of illicit drug trade, and with that comes substantial profits, but it also comes at great risk. The risk being is we will pursue you, and uh, that pursuit could result in uh, imprisonment. So there, there is obviously a, a fairly significant dent in their business model, yes. What's the street value of these drugs, and how does that rank in other seizures in South Australia? Uh, well, Commander Sakura obviously mentioned the seizure last week of the methamphetamine that was seized. That was, you know, that was a lot of drugs. Uh, we haven't put a value on this. Um, in the media release, there are some uh, figures on the seizures that were obtained as a result of these operations. Um, but uh, to have an actual value of that, no, I can't provide that at the moment. Which outlaw uh, gangs are involved here? Are you uh, the ones we're alleging in this one is the Hells Angels, the Gypsy Jokers, the descendants and the banditos. And uh, in saying that, uh, this is very much about sometimes those groups working in isolation and perhaps sometimes coming together uh, to really pull their resources to maximise their profits. Was there evidence of that, of them working together? Yes, there is. Yes, I can't go into too much uh, detail because the matter is before the courts, but uh, certainly there is evidence that at points in time, these groups will come together to effectively partner and uh, do illicit drug trade. At other times they may operate independently, but uh, as has already been mentioned, our resolve to uh, disrupt and dismantle all of these groups is again part of this concerted effort. Do you believe the drugs were manufactured here or were they destined for South Australian streets or were they being made or distributed in the state? Uh, it's probably a combination of everything. Um, certainly these drugs would have ended up on the streets uh, across South Australia and there is also a chance they could have ended up uh, interstate. Uh, what we have shown, particularly with uh, recent drug seizures, is that um, the distribution networks are far and wide, which is why this really is a national program. It's not just South Australia in isolation because these drugs, and uh, I can't go into any detail about whether they were manufactured here in South Australia or, or imported, uh, but suffice to say that these drugs will end up you know, either in South Australia or somewhere else across the nation. What about the 12 men? Are they still in custody or are they... Uh, we have some released on bail and some in custody, uh, and uh, as part of the release there are the details on the persons who are appearing before the courts. Obviously, in South Australia, we have the anti-association laws. These parties aren't supposed to even be with each other. Um, what are they doing to get around those laws? Where are they meeting? Where are they making these drugs? Uh, I guess they're, they're circumventing some of the laws, but I say the laws themselves are extremely successful. We don't see uh, outlaw motorcycle gangs congregating in public anymore. Uh, so in that regard, again, it's another disruption to their business model. So we've been able to infiltrate their business despite the very good and positive effects the criminal association laws are making. So they'll still continue to do business, and as we've shown here, uh, we've still got that ability to take them out of business. Were they all arrested without incident? Yes, yep. And uh, we will provide some footage that was taken by South Australia Police, which shows the arrest of two men. Uh, and the search of a property using our drug dog. But uh, all 12 arrests were without incident. Can you just maybe look after the proceedings at least tell us which of those two men are individual and which property, just so we can work that out? Yeah. I'll talk to our people and see what we can do for you. What, what was the role of the Board of Horse in the tax office in this? Uh, it's, and perhaps I might, uh, I might get Commander Sapora, he's standing here, but uh, I, I think that's a good question for him to answer. It's okay. 
One of the things with our National Anti-Gang Squad is that uh, not only is it uh, made up of uh, Federal Police and South Australia Police, but we also have um, uh, people from uh, Australian Border Force, the Australian Taxation Office, um, and also the Australian Criminal Intelligence as part of the task force. So any inquiries that we have with regards to the people that are being investigated, whether it's this operation or other op operations, we obviously utilise those resources to look at you know, things such as money movements, travel movements and the like.